Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about section 14.5. We're going to be finishing it with a discussion of how the chain rule can help us find an implicit derivative easily. So if you remember, the setup for implicit differentiation was we have some sort of equation. So like in Calc 1, we have some sort of equation x squared plus xy plus y cubed equals 10. Okay, now you could always solve these equations so that we could get a zero on one side. This is the setup for an implicit differentiation. We use implicit differentiation, which we revisited in 14.3. We use implicit differentiation to find dy dx, okay? With just the letter d, no partials were around. Now, in 3D, in 3D, we can call or describe, we can describe this situation by some function x with x and y as variables equals zero, right? We're just gonna label this whole thing, including the constant, as a function f of x, y, okay? And consider y as some function of x, a function of x, just like we were doing um, back in 2D land. The tree you would get, right, if we're going to do a tree diagram, the tree diagram would have f at the very top. f is an equation with two letters in it, x and y. The x doesn't have any letters, it depends on. And y is dependent on x, right? It's like y equals g of x or lowercase f of x. That's the idea here, right? X is a de dependent, or so, and X is independent, is truly independent. That's why it's the bottom of a, a branch. Now, I know that tree diagram looks wild. Don't focus on it too much if it bothers you. Just follow along with what I'm about to say. All right, now, really carefully, let w equals f of x, y. So I'm saying like, let this also be w. Then partial w, partial x would be partial f, partial x times dx dx, right? Plus partial f, partial y times dy dx. Now, dx dx is just one, okay? So when I take this derivative, what I'm really seeing is that the derivative with respect to x is this partial derivative with respect to x plus this partial derivative with respect to y times dy dx. So if I'm taking the derivative of both sides of this equation, if I differentiate with respect to x with respect to x, we'll end up with that whole thing, partial f partial x plus partial f partial y times dy dx equals zero. And now this is gonna be a powerful equation we're gonna to manipulate to solve for dy dx. We're gonna start that on the next page. So 
if I had partial f partial x plus partial f partial y times dy dx equals zero. I can rewrite this using our subscript notation, which you might remember from chapter 14.3. And then we can solve for dy dx, just like we used to. dy dx equals negative x sub x and dy dx equals negative fx over fy. As long as, as long as fy is not equal to zero. Okay, and that's a nice little equation we can use here. This will always work as long as you can make sure you get an implicit equation. You can just consider it as a function of x and y. Take the derivative with respect to x, take the derivative with respect to y, and then be on your merry way. Let's go over a brief example. All right? Let's go over one of the most hated examples from uh, last year or something like what we were talking about on the last page. We have x squared plus xy plus y cubed. What did I write? Yeah, y cubed equals or minus 10 equals 0. Last year, this was very annoying because you'd have to worry about the product rule. But if we just say, let that be f of x, y. f of x, y, then f sub x is 2x plus y. f sub y is x plus 3y squared. And so dx, sorry, dy dx equals negative 2x plus y divided by x plus 3y squared. Done. Putting the f of x, fx on top and the fy on the bottom. That's it. That's all it takes to do these derivatives really quickly now. That's the magic here. I hope that proof made sense. But again, at the end of the day, you can just use this formula. But the formula should make sense. We take the derivative of both sides. On this side, we were allowed to use this manipulation. And then we just manipulated it symbolically before we did anything with the actual equation they gave us. One more and we'll be done. 3 root xy minus 2y minus 4 equals 0. What would you do? Well, one of the first things I recommend you do is write this as xy to the one half power. And then you should be able to go about your business, right? You're going to call this whole thing f of xy, and you're going to differentiate the partial derivatives. Find me the partial derivatives here. Whoops, let's not put the division sign between them yet. Find me the partial derivatives. Pause the video right now. Try to put down your final answer. Even, you probably can't go all the way, but I would make, make sure your derivatives are okay. Three, two, one. With respect to x, you should get four x plus three halves x, y to the negative one half times y, times y. Fy should be 3 halves xy to the negative 1 half times x minus 2. If you have that all together, make sure you put the partial derivative with respect to x on top. It's a little backwards. Over here, it looks like y should be on top. But if you look at the formula, x goes on top. The derivative with respect to x goes on top. So 4x plus 3 halves 
x, y to the negative one half times y, all with a negative sign, divided by three halves x, y to the negative one half times x minus two. To clean that up, if you ever were interested in cleaning up something like that, you could multiply the top and the bottom by two root x, y. That will undo this part and the two. And if we did all that, we would get negative four, eight, ooh, sorry, negative eight x root x, y plus three y over three x minus four root x, y. A much nicer form just by multiplying by the square roots. Now, the last thing I wanted to go over was something like this. It's also just a short explanation here or a short extension. For W equal F of all this junk or um, Z, sorry, and Z is some function of g x y right we're considering g is implicitly defined implicitly so like it won't be solved for it won't be solved for explicitly all of those same tricks would work to show that dz dx will be partial f partial with x over f with respect to z and partial z partial y is going to be y over fz okay for the same exact reasons you'll be able to solve that you'll be able to make a tree diagram these are just the two other rules you'll have to understand you have to know okay um, if you wanted to make the tree diagram, I guess I will. I guess I'll be a softie here. It will look as if W has those three variables, X, Y, and Z. That's what this equation is saying, right? But secretly, Z is based on X and Y. So really, there's not much going on here. And that tree is kind of circular. Right, the web dot, it's sort of more of a, um, yeah, I don't know, a Mandela, Mandala? I don't know, who knows. All right, so that's what's going on. So let's do an example of this, okay? If we have X, sorry, if we have X squared plus XY minus X squared Z plus Y, sorry, YZ squared equals zero. This is an implicit equation for Z in terms of X and Y. So to try to solve this, we notice that our formula says the partial derivative with respect to X is negative F sub X over F sub Z. So the partial derivative with respect to X divided by the partial derivative with respect to Z. What's F supposed to be? Well, you make sure you have zero on one side of your equation, and then F is everything on the other side. And we're thinking of it as a function with three variables, X, Y, and Z. So the derivative of that function or that side with respect to X, make sure you put the negative and the parentheses, is two X plus Y minus two X, Z. We're treating this part as a constant with respect to X because it doesn't have any X's in it. And all of that is going to be divided by that same equation with its derivative taken with respect to Z. So now we're talking about negative X squared plus two Y Z. This part being a constant with respect to Z because it doesn't have any Z's in it. And that's it. That's the partial derivative of Z with respect to X.
Likewise, if we did partial z partial y, it's going to be negative fy over fz. Notice that for both of these, they're flipped, so to speak. You want to watch out for that. That's a really common mistake. Just make sure you flip it and you have a opposite situation. You want me on? All right, so you should try this one out. What's that derivative with respect to y? Three, two, one, x plus two y, z. Where this derivative is constant, this is constant with respect to y. All over that same bottom, because we should notice these are both the same exact thing. So they should both be the same exact thing in their respective fractions. And that's all there is to this. I hope it's not that bad. I think it's pretty understandable. But if it's not, make sure you come and ask questions or get some help. Maybe watch the videos. I don't know. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your attention. And I'll see you in the next video.